Hello everyone, this is J Popsicles, and I'm here with a little uh, tutorial. Well, it's a, more of a how to do this. Uh, I'm here in Paint Tool Sci, which is the program that I use for almost all of my art stuff. And one of the things that I get a lot of other artists, and I've had this problem too, was that how do you make perfect shapes? Now, Psy isn't like Photoshop in that it's more used for sketching and line work and freehand stuff, and there isn't really a way to get straight lines unless you hold down shift to make straight lines. But these straight lines, they sometimes get messy, and they're not really, uh, you can't make shapes with them. Uh, there isn't really a guide on how to make uh, squares or circles. Uh, especially, it's harder to make circles because uh, the way that I used to do it was that I would make uh, a whole a circle with my mouse with the pen tool and then use the eraser tool uh, but this doesn't really work that well uh, as you can see I'm gonna have to manually sort of uh, erase and even when that if you zoom in it kind of leaves these shadows that I don't really want uh, which makes it really messy and not really uh, appropriate for line work. Uh, but I have learned a couple of tricks and I'm going to share with you. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect circle. And then next would be how to use this same uh, technique to make other shapes as well. Not necessarily a circle, but something else uh, like squares and hexagons and that sort of thing. Now, the first thing that you want to do is uh, you want to go over here to your layer toolbar and you want to click on the new line work layer. It's right over here, right next to the new layer. Uh, some people also call it a vector layer, but for these purposes we're just going to call it a line work layer. Now what you want to do is that you want to get into the line work layer here, and then you want to go to curve on the brush toolbar. You want to select that because that's exactly what makes the circle. Uh, now you want to keep your finger on very two important keys. You want to keep them on the delete key. Oh. The delete key and the end key. Now what these keys do, as I'll show you right now, is that the, when you press the delete key, it turns your canvas uh, clockwise. It turns it that way. And when you hit the end key, it turns it the other way. So if you ever make a mistake, uh, if you're going with delete, you can just press end. It'll reset the canvas. Or you can press up here, and you can just reset the canvas that way. <laughs> now. Uh, we're going to go to this line work area. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And with the curve tool selected, we're just going to click once with the mouse or the trackpad or with your tablet. It really depends on your preference, but I prefer the mouse just because it's hard to keep the tablet pen pressing at the same spot. And that's what's needed for this sort of technique. So if you want to use the mouse or trackpad, that's fine. If you want to use your tablet and you think you have a steady enough hand, that's also pretty good. Now we've clicked once and we're just going to keep the cursor, the mouse, where it is, and we're just going to press delete. And as you can see, it's mo it's uh, rotated it cl uh, clockwise one bip. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep the mouse where it is. We're just going to click one more time, and you see that's made a straight line. Uh, we're going to click it again, we're gonna click, and you can see that the line is already starting to curve. That's because the curve tool should do this automatically. And we're just going to click all the way around. And as you can see, it's starting to go on its own. And you can kind of get the idea of what's happening here. And I made a mistake, so I'm just going to press end uh, again. And then click and click and click. If you want to cheat and you want to, like, press uh, delete multiple times, uh, it doesn't really work. You kind of get with a misshapen circle. So for a perfect circle, you probably want to be safe and just click once every single time you press uh, delete. And we're going to double click, and double click ends the line, and you're left with an awesome, perfect circle. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Now, if you've never used line work layers before, uh, there's a special, some special things that you can do in line work layers that you can't do with the other layers. And one of those things is uh, changing the size. Uh, you go to weight, and then you press on the line and that changes the size of it. So if you wanted to make it like a really small circle, like a really fine circle, that's what you would press. Uh, if you want to make a big circle like 30 pixels, you could do this. 30 pixels is the maximum size you can do, but you could do uh, transform right here, which is control T if you like keyboard shortcuts and just move it around. Uh, so like if you want to make it bigger or something like that, but I'm not going to do that right now. 
let's just make it oops just make it this size. Uh, what you can also do in the line work layer is that you can change the color of it with just this. It's a little bit easier than just um, uh, preserving opacity and then changing it manually. Uh, something else that you can do is that you can change the pressure of certain points. So let's say you wanted to make uh, this a little bit like less. So let's make that 40 and let's make that 62. And then just keep on going down a little bit. So if you can see there, uh, when I switch to this, the, the top portion of that is a little bit thinner. And you can also do it the other way. Just click pressure and then go to the other side of the circle, make it bigger. And then you sort of have this uh, weighted sort of uh, circle. So it kind of looks more dynamic in a way. Uh, now that we've done the circle, uh, we're going to also do uh, a hexagon. Now a hexagon is the exact same technique. Uh, we're going to go uh, a new line work layer. And we're going to choose not curve, but line. Line is right next to it. Uh, you're going to do the exact same thing you did with the circle, except uh, you're going to you're going to click, let's make it a different color. You're going to click, and then you're going to press uh, delete four times. So one, two, three, four, click. And what this does, it just makes a straight line with no curve edges to it. So we're going to do it again. One, two, three, four, click. And as you can see, the layer is doing all the work for us. Oh, I think I made a mistake there. So we're going to try again. If you ever recount uh, and you've already clicked, you can just uh, control Z all of it. There we go. And once again, double click to end the line, and you have a perfect. Uh, pe hexagon, sorry, I almost said pentagon there. We got a perfect hexagon, you can change it in any which way, and the same kind of rules apply. You can make it bigger, you can make the line weight smaller or bigger, depending on what you want. You can change the color of it if you wanted to, and of course you can change the pressure on the sort of edges here. So we're going to go ahead and do that and make it look a little bit more interesting. Now, the cool thing about this tool is that what normally would have taken like hours of practice, uh, I know that if you had a ruler and a tablet, you could do it that way, but you can't get perfect crisp shapes like this. Uh, and the best part is that uh, when you transform them, like so, uh, if it was just a normal layer, when you made it too big, uh, the lines would probably get really fuzzy and not so... Uh, uh, see you can see that the lines are still crisp and if you were just to make it uh, a normal layer like I'm going to show you right now if you just merge it down and then move it uh, when you make it super big like that the line kind of loses its quality a little bit so I'll show you a little bit see it's saying it's fuzzy on the edges I'm not sure if you can see that but here is what the untransformed thing looks like and that's what the transformed thing looks like so it gets a little bit fuzzier it's harder to tell uh, with what parts are transparent or not when you're using the bucket tool. Uh, it basically makes it a lot easier to work with when it's a line work layer and not a and not a normal layer. Alright, so now we're going to go on for squares. And squares are the exact same thing ex as the hexagon, except instead of four times, you're going to do it eight times. So we're going to go with this, and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think I did it wrong again. So let's try it again. One, oh, nope. So let's, let's count, because I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 And double click again, and you got a square. It doesn't look like a square right now, it looks like a diamond, but when you transform it, it's a square. Uh, and then again, you can transform it however you want, uh, make the colors different, uh, put the pressure higher or lower on either side, 
uh, basically anything you wanted to do. And that's really about it. I haven't figured out a lot more shapes, uh, but uh, there are 52 times you can go over with this, I think. Um, I'm sure there's less, but my brain is just counting up 8 times 4. Uh, but so long as you have end it in the same place that you began it, you can really just make any shape you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect square or a perfect uh, hexagon or a circle. Uh, like if you wanted to make a triangle, you could just go this way one way and then that way the other way and then just end it on the same spot, because it'll always end on the same spot no matter where you start, <laughs> because of that's how uh, the curved line. So long as you don't move the mouse in any crazy which way, you'll always end up in the same space. Uh, but this was a little trick that I learned, I forget who exactly the Tumblr user was where I learned it from, but I'll definitely uh, put a link to the post in the description uh, if you have any other sort of tips and tricks, or you want to see any um, speed paint or drawings that I have. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or anything else for that matter. So for more tips and tricks, go ahead and follow me on YouTube. Uh, if you want to take a look at my Twitter or my Facebook, that's perfectly great. In fact, I would uh, highly suggest it. And again, um, I'm always open on my Redbubble and my Society6. I'm always open for commissions. All you need to do is send me a shout out. Uh, my commission info will al also be in the description. And... That's about it. So I'll see you all next time. This is really fun. Bye-bye.